Hi, this is PD at Bergser Arcade at bergserarcade.com, and this is tutorial 223. Now, today we're going to continue on with our particle system, uh, but we're going to look at something a little bit different today. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the mesh particle emitter, and the best way I can think of to demonstrate that for our game purposes is uh, let's start playing around with uh, special effects on our weapons. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of my weapons in scene. So I have them under items. Uh, mesh, weapon, uh, let's go with the sword. So I'm just going to take a sword and come into my scene and drop it in. And I'm just going to move it around just a little bit so I can see above and below it to make sure I got my particles going the right way. And now that I have it selected, I'm just going to shrink down the material. I'm actually going to turn the mesh renderer off for now. And I'm not going to get rid of it. I just want to turn it off just so I can see the uh, particles that I'm going to be adding a little bit better. Now I'm going to come to component particles, add a particle, or oh, sorry, mesh particle emitter. And since it's losing prefab, that's fine. I'm just testing stuff out. I'm going to shrink these down as I'm adding them. Next, I'm going to add a particle animator. And then after that, I'm going to add a particle renderer. And the first one I'm going to work on is a particle renderer. We notice here it's, you know, we're getting these little pink things, and that's because we don't have a material assigned. Uh, so I'm going to close up my weapons here. And I did make some effects. Yeah, we made the fire and smoke, I believe, last time. This is the material I'm going to use again. And I'm also going to, since it was a sprite sheet, set the uh, tiles. And I think I had four as the cycles that I liked. I'm going to turn off my shadows because they don't seem to have any. And actually, one quick look. I just want to make sure everything's done here. I don't need to go in here anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and change some of the colors just so it looks a little bit better. And since these are fire, I'm just going to start off with the red at um, a low opacity. So we'll say 10. And I'm just, just to quickly put it in, I'm just going to go from red to yellow. Uh, that would make the middle orange. And I'll put it at about 50%. And then I want something between orange and yellow. Uh, so I'll grab this, the lighter orange here. And I'll give that, um, I don't know, 30%. And of course, I clicked on the wrong one. So we'll go here, make this 50. Click this one. Uh, 30 and then something between red and orange. Uh, let's grab this one. And I believe it was 30 on the last one. So there we go. At least it looks a little bit more like fire, uh, but not exactly what we're looking for. And if we actually did turn the mesh on, that's what I thought. We weren't actually looking at the whole weapon. So I'm actually going to move this down a bit. Uh, one of the main things you'll notice with the mesh renderer, or not the mesh renderer, the mesh particle emitter, is we do have a few new options here, and they're all at the bottom. Uh, one is the mesh, and that's basically the mesh that uh, this particle system is going to spawn from. In this case, it's the sword we have it attached to. We have a minimum normal velocity and a max normal velocity, and that's just basically how far the particles are going to spawn from the actual mesh itself. Uh, systematic. Uh, systematic is uh, the particles will spawn according to uh, what the vertice number is. So when your mesh is created, you know, there's going to be like a vertice 1, vertice 2, vertice 3. Uh, I don't believe there's a way to actually see that in Unity, what vertice is what. Uh, but in your 3D modeling package, there's usually a way to be able to see uh, what the vertice uh, order is. And if we turn it on, it might change a bit. I don't think I quite have enough particles for it. I'm just going to turn that off. Uh, interpolate triangles. If we notice right now, all of these particles are actually spawning on vertices. And you notice like there's nothing spawning along here. And if you want something to spawn, well, basically not only on the vertices themselves, turn this on. And we'll notice that now they're starting to spawn uh, not just on the vertices themselves. Now these fire particles are a little slow are small. I'm just going to take a look here, make sure I don't see anything new in this component that we haven't covered yet. So I'm going to go ahead and just crank these particles up. I'll try 0.5 to 1 and 
that's too much. <laughs> Whoops, I want about half of that. So I'm going to go 0.25 to 0.5. And that's okay, but we'll notice we're getting a large concentration here. Uh, I want it to move along the weapon. So uh, if we notice here, this is my Y. This is, well, let's reset the, the actual uh, rotation of our item. And I've lost my mouse on the other screen. Here we go. And I just did it again. There we go. Uh, so I'm going to reset my rotation. So now that Y is pointing up, X is pointing in the right direction, and so is, oh, sorry, Z is pointing in the right direction, and so is my X. And I'm going to come down to local velocity, and I'm going to shift all my flames on the positive um, Z. So I'm going to come down to Z, and we'll just start off, I'll just move it one. And that's pretty cool. It, it uh, doesn't show as much in the pommel anymore, and more in the blade. Uh, but they're shooting out way too far. And there's a couple ways I could fix that. One is I could reduce the energy. But I think a better way to do it would be come down to our particle animator. And let's put the dampening on. I'll put it down to 0.5. That's a little bit better. Still shooting above the, the blade, which is fine. I'm going to bring it down just a bit more. Maybe 0.25. Uh, there we go. That's a little bit better. Uh, I'm not going to bother with size grow, but I do kind of want to add a little bit of a livelier effect. So I'm going to come up to my random velocity. And I'll just do 0.5 for now. So there's a little bit of movement going on. I think I actually have it slowed down a little too much. Well, let's go ahead and actually spawn our character in game. And we'll equip the weapon to him. And we'll actually see what it looks like. So I'm going to click on this weapon mount so I know where it is. I'm going to scroll down until I find my sword. Just drag it onto the weapon mount. Now I'm going to click on the sword in the weapon mount. And I'm just going to reset its position and rotation. And take a look at it. It's not that bad. Uh, I like the trail when he runs. I'd like some of the flame to actually stay on the weapon though. Uh, I think the easiest way to fix that would probably be to simulate in world space. So I'm actually just going to leave it actually running. And we'll work from there. So let me just take a look here. Yeah, if I put on simulate in world space, or if I turn it off, sorry. Uh, this flame now will only be on the weapon and it moves with it. Not exactly the effect I'm looking for. Uh, but it's a little bit better. I might have to do some sort of combination of the two. So I have uh, <laughs> those flames shooting up the end kind of annoy me. So I'll have to tinker around with that. Uh, but it's a little bit better. So maybe a combination of the two. Uh, I could have it a, a smaller one that has the trails and a larger one actually on the weapon itself. Uh, I'm going to slow it down just a bit more. And I'm going to leave it running so I can actually see it in the person's hand. Now that's making a lot down here. So what I'm going to do is increase my uh, local velocity. And uh, maybe I'll do two. We'll come in take a look. It's a little bit better. Uh, instead of having it shooting straight out, let's add some force to it. Uh, let's do the force on the Y. And we'll start off with one. Uh, since we have it simulating a world space now, it's it's actually why is the um, no, story we have it not simulated in world space. It's going to go on its own why. And if we take a look, if I can, uh, we'll have to go into the scene view. Here we go. It's moving along on its own X. So we could probably actually fix this up. Just let me deactivate teleport. There we go. So I'm going to go ahead and fix the local on Z. Let's put that back down to zero. Oops, sorry. 
we were playing around with the the force. There we go. We'll just switch that. And that's Z, so it's actually X we want. That looks a little bit better. Uh, helps them in game view. Uh, yeah, it definitely needs to be have some playing around with, but I think I've got the basic of what I was looking for. Uh, it's a little too much on on the actual X, and I actually do want to have simulate on world space. So I am gonna to have to make some more adjustments there again, but. Uh, I think that should be enough to give you an idea of what we're trying to go after. Now, I wonder what would happen if I just slowed the particles all the way down. They still come off. And the handle gets really hot. <laughs> okay, well, I think you have a basic idea of how this works. It's only one new component that we're adding. Uh, feel free to tinker around with it. I think it's at least a good start to creating your elemental weapons. And wow, well, that's, that's a lot on the Z. And anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, that's about it for this tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.